Greetings, this is Dr. Derek Ong with the next series of videos to um, help students to do statistical analysis using SPSS. So um, this is going to be the first part of the video for me to uh, do uh, correlation and multiple linear regression analysis. Uh, before we go into the SPSS, uh, this part of the video, I'm going to be explaining to you the concepts behind correlation and multiple linear regression. So, um, so far we have already done uh, in my previous videos the sections on uh, the analysis of this quadrant here, where we looked at the categorical and quantitative methods. Uh, we looked at uh, more than two groups and also um, repeated measures in this quadrant. There was also a video where we looked at this and now we are concentrating on this section here which is looking at the relationship between quantitative variables and quantitative variables. So the correlation coefficient uh, is our R measures the relative strength of the linear relationship between two variables. And this is the um, formula, but I won't bore you with the formula because I know it's too much to look at. So correlation has three. It measures the degree of relatedness of two or more variables. It ranges from negative zero to one. Uh, and negative one, of course, denotes perfect linear negative relationship. Positive one denotes perfect linear positive relationship, and zero means there's no relationship. If we were to draw a scatter plot, we would get degrees like this. So this is a negative linear relationship, positive linear, and no relationship. So now moving on to multiple linear regression. Now in multiple linear regression, we need to first understand that it uses the methods of least squares. Uh, linear regression actually uh, is good for a model for prediction. Now we, the, one of the ways that we check whether a model is good for prediction is to look at the significance of the F tests. Uh, each of the individual T statistics needs to be uh, significant, high R square with low uh, SSE. And before we can actually understand or appreciate linear regression, we first have to understand there are a couple of assumptions that linear regression must uh, cover. So I'm going to cover linearity, normality, uh, homogeneity of variances, independent of errors, and multicollinearity. So linearity means that um, there is a linear relationship between your x and your y. And because this is a um, linear regression, we are looking at the relationship between a continuous y and a continuous x. Now, sometimes the x can also be dichotomous, which means it's a dummy variable 0 and 1. Now, if you look at this graph here, it uses the methods of least squares. So what does least square mean? The green dots are the observed values. And the green line here is the predicted line from whence the green dots actually uh, form. So the pluses and the minuses are actually the differences between the observed and the predicted values. So why minus y hat, which is the difference between the uh, observed and the predicted, would produce our errors. So our sums of squares of all our errors would basically give us the, uh, sorry, square, would basically give us the uh, uh, methods of least square whereby we are minimizing the errors between the observed and the predicted. So if you imagine if there is a observation suddenly appear here, this line would suddenly go this way because it's trying to minimize the errors between all the dots that is uh, in, 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 in observation. So that, that is how the principles of least squares work. 
So first off, we have to then check for normality. And normality is pretty simple. Uh, we need to check for skewness and ketosis, making sure that it's between negative 2 and plus 2, as mentioned by Greg Lynn Mallory. Uh, Mallory. Uh, we need to make sure that KS test is not significant to make sure that it stays in normal. We can use the non-parametric tests if we have found a non-normality in our um, variables. But this usually doesn't really have a big effect if we use skewness and ketosis. Next, we want to check for homogeneity of variances, which means there's no heteroscedasticity. So if we were to uh, track the predicted value over the residuals with a zero point here, which crosses across, you can see that with the higher variances of the predicted values uh, or the higher values of predicted values, you, you will notice that the dots will fall evenly above and below the standardized residual. So this is homoscedastic, but if you see something like this, then you notice that there is a big um, fanning effect, which means there is a pattern. So the higher levels of the axis, you have more variances as opposed to the lower level of the axis, you have less variances. So this is not what we want, and this will cause heteroscedasticity. Our next assumption that we need to look at is no autocorrelation of errors. That means the errors are independent of each other. We check this using the Durbin Watson statistics, making sure that it's within plus minus two. So we also ensure that the uh, plots for histogram uh, of the residuals is good uh, and normal and not skewed to the right or left. Multicollinearity is, of course, is a problem whereby we have two independent variables that are highly correlated to each other. Uh, we check this using either correlation analysis to check for high correlation, or we check to make sure that tolerance level is uh, more than 0 0.2, checking for variance inflection factors less than 10. Now, if we do find this multicollinearity, we can either drop one of the variables, combine the variables, or use mediation analysis to rectify the situation. That's all for this video for now. Uh, do use this video for, uh, as a guide for the next video where I'm going to show you in SPSS how we do multiple linear regression, check for all the assumptions, as well as reporting. Thank you.